Hey Wanda and Lucy Beckham students, I'm Nick Patel, and today on East Cooper Student News, we'll tell you about the new way the CAS is helping families in need. We'll introduce you to Wanda's new basketball coach and a preview of the Bengals' upcoming season. We got a cool story about one man in Mount Pleasant who is cashing in on the world's biggest sports team. It's December 7th, 2022. Don't go anywhere, because ECSN starts now. Everyone knows the holiday season is a time of giving. A few students have taken this to a whole new level by starting a food pantry at the CAS. I had a chance to check out the pantry and see how giving a little can go a long way. Inflation has made everything more expensive, from clothes to food, from everything in between. This has affected everyone across the country, including families at the East Cooper CAS, who now have to carefully watch how they spend every dollar. In fact, some families may struggle to put food on the table. That's why a group of CAS teachers and students created the Lighthouse Food Pantry. CAS is like a family. A lot of the people closest to you may be in need, and even a small donation can make a big difference. Right now, three kids, along with Ms. Parker, are working on the food pantry. They accept donations like food, drinks, paper products, and any other grocery items that can be used to help the families. So I think, honestly, community service in general is important. Um, People who donate to this ideally should care about the amount of help that they're doing for the community. And in my opinion, the people who are going to care the most about this are the people who are receiving this because it's an extremely life-changing opportunity for some people. Lizzie Neubauer is one of the students who helps take in donations, and she wants you to know how to help. We have an Amazon wish list, which has been very successful, and we also will have themed food drives throughout the year, and we are always accepting donations. Any family that um, has a student that goes to the East Cooper CAS um, has the opportunity to potentially have access to this food pantry. Now, ideally, they're reaching out to us via um, email or uh, filling out a paper application so we can get data on their family. Food will be given out to families on a first-come, first-served basis. The food pantry has already given access to multiple families who are in need of help. Before Thanksgiving, the pantry team gave lots of families Thanksgiving boxes. Each box included roughly $150 worth of groceries. Considering the cost of Thanksgiving dinner is 20% higher this year than it was last year, Mrs. Parker says it's a great start to their mission. Hi. This is just phenomenal, more than I could have ever imagined, um, and I'm very, very, very excited for the rest of this year because I know this room is going to be packed. The Lighthouse Food Pantry is a great way for students and staff at the CAS to help each other out. Plus you know that the donations are helping someone right here in your own community. The pantry is taking donations all year long. You can help by talking to Ms. Parker in room K223. Families who are in need of assistance should contact the email address on your screen. Today is December 7th, and that means there's 18 days until Christmas. Some of you probably haven't finished your shopping yet, and our staff has been working hard to come up with the good gift ideas for this year. What's, What's up, up Wando and Beckham? Beckham? I'm Ella Davis. And I'm Luca Albron. We've got a special segment for you today, a crash course holiday gift guide for friends, siblings, or the special person in your life. But this isn't just based on our opinions. We hit the halls of Wando and asked fellow students their thoughts, got input, and asked them what's on their holiday wish list. That's a great question. I'd say more gym equipment. For Christmas, I want some books and a Yuki Judai figure. <laughs> 
I got Taylor Swift tickets. I was actually able to get through Ticketmaster and get Taylor Swift tickets. So I'm not getting <laughs> too much for Christmas this year. So I think I just asked for like some little stocking stuffers. What I want for Christmas is uh, like a pair of hiking boots because I love to hike. Back to us, we made a list of gifts to spark inspiration for this upcoming holiday season. Starting off, we've got inspiration for our music lovers. Based on reviews, we think AirPod Max and Beats Solo wireless headphones are going to be popular this year. If you aren't a headphone lover, the new version of AirPod Pros also works. JBL speakers are also a hit, whether it's for beach days or winter bonfires. Everyone loves them. Finally, buying someone their favorite album on CD or vinyl shows the thoughtful side of things, and a record player is always a favorite. For our readers out there, we think that merchandise from their favorite book series is always a good idea, and a bookshelf organizer will really turn the page. An easy good gift is a mini book nightlight and also gift cards to somebody's favorite bookstores. For our video game lovers, we think a Steam gift card is a good and versatile idea. Also, a lot of anticipated new games such as Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 came out this year, so that's a good recommendation to give out to people. And finally, a PS5, if you can find one. For outdoorsy people out there, we think Blundstone boots or Birkenstock boxings would be a good footwear choice, but those are on the pricier side. Some other gift ideas are gift cards to the new REI co-op store or Half Moon Outfitters. We also think that some National Parks merchandise is a good choice. Lastly, on our list for this year, just some basic gift ideas that fit anyone's personality, we think that disposable cameras are an easy and cheap option to capture the moment. Merchandise from someone's favorite artist or band is always a good idea salt lamps or fairy lights for some ambient light, and a practical idea could be a multi-charging stamp. We hope this helps you feel inspired for the holidays this year. Thanks for tuning in. Signing off for ECSN, I'm Luca Alboron. And I'm Ella Davis. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. It's not just the holiday season. As December rolls in, it's officially winter sports season. And one of the biggest sports during this season is basketball. And over at Wando, the boys' basketball team has a new man in charge. Andrew Peterwright tells us more about the new head man, Coach Kraft. When you look to the sidelines at the Wando basketball games this season, you're going to see a new face leading the Warriors. This is uh, year 26 overall. Um, I've been a varsity coach before for six years, uh, but I've been on staffs in North Carolina, Georgia, and South Carolina. The Warriors' new basketball head coach is Calvin Kraft. He's coached for 26 years but this is his first year as the Wando's head coach. Anytime there's a new leader, the players have to get used to the new style of coaching. The old coach had a whole different like mindset with the game, but I think I'm starting to get used to it now. Coach Kraft and Coach Simic have emphasized making practices like more fun and more competitive, where in the past practices were more just about drills and all that, but now practices are competitive-based and more fun-based, and I think it's working because we'll, we play a lot harder at practice. We have to, you have to beat people with, you know, playing five as one, essentially. And we have enough good players if we play together and use each other and play our system, and uh, that'll make us successful. The hope is that by making practices competitive and embracing an unselfish style of play on the court, then the Warriors will be really competitive on game days. But that's going to take a lot of commitment from both players and coaches. He expects us to put it all on the floor, leave it out, make the other team feel our, our game. Coach Kraft expects 100% from me, nothing less, and I expect the same from him. We both know we got to go 100%. We got to go 100%. Coaching staff has to go 100%. And that's what it takes to win the region here and be good in the playoffs and all that. Last season, the Warriors went 12 and 12, which was good enough for second place in the region. This year, Coach Kraft and his team plan to build on the success from last winter. Wins and losses and competing for the region championship and trying to make a run in the playoffs, those are always goals uh, that you want to have. And we should, we should have those goals here at Wando. We haven't been a broken program, but there is another level that we need to try to get to. Coach Kraft and the Warriors are off to a good start so far. They won all three games and the championship in the tip-off at the damn tournament and they look to continue that success for the rest of the season. This is Andrew Peterwright standing off for ECSN. As of our typing, Wando's boys team is off to a 3-1 and one start. Over at Beckham, the boys have started a huge 50-point win over St. John's. As of our typing, the girls are also off to a 2-1 and one start. 
we have gained a few other girls that are super competitive and talented and we've had an extra year to work hard and get to know each other and that just makes us a better basketball team. We have about seven seniors on our team so it's different than last year. Um, we have a really good player-led program this year. I've really enjoyed being a senior on the team and getting to encourage my teammates to work hard each and every day. I have younger kids on the team looking up to me so um, it's, it's awesome to lead them. On a national level, it's also a World Cup season. The U.S. is in the World Cup for the first time since 2014. And while soccer is the most popular sport in our country, it is the most popular sport in, around the globe. UCSN reporter Lucas Barker tells us how one Mount Pleasant man is cashing in on the world's biggest game. On any given day, you might find Mark Hogan here in his home office working. Part of his work is make different kinds of investments. Yeah, it's actually uh, easier than you would think. So obviously there's a financial return that we hope to see. Anytime someone invests money, their plan is to make money. Mark is no different. Typically, investments are things like stocks, bonds, or real estate. But earlier this year, Mark invested in something different. I thought that a sports team would be the perfect avenue. Mark invested in a soccer team in Spain called Algeciras. He was able to choose between a few teams, but ended up going with Algeciras. Ultimately, the reason why we decided to go with Algeciras is because of their location and uh, tourist market. Mark lives right here in Mount Pleasant, and he knows a thing or two about what a good tourism market looks like. However, Mark has an interesting challenge trying to evaluate the market his soccer team plays in. So I've never even been to Algeciras. I've never even been to Spain. Mark doesn't have to go to Spain to know how popular soccer is worldwide. It's the most popular sport in the world, and it's most popular in Spain. Mark believes sports are important even beyond their entertainment value. One reason why I enjoy watching sports is because of the mindset that athletes have towards the pursuit of their goals and the, the way they push themselves towards becoming the best that they can be. And as a new investor in his soccer team, he wants to share and expand his lessons to an even larger audience here in America. Part of the hope in attracting Americans more to European football and Europeans to the American youth development market is to have a place where people wanted to go and visit and experience and through that become more immersed in the culture. Investing in a soccer team might be an unusual decision, but Mark Cognon plans to make the most out of investment. Reporting for ECSN, I'm Lucas Barker. That story was produced by our Media Tech One student. Great work, guys. Over here at the CAS, several media students are lighting the way. Mr. Fabiano is a teacher who helps us produce ECSN, and he nominated Izzy Swite for CAS Student Spotlight last week. I feel amazing. I spend like three hours a day in this class with Mr. Fab and with all of my student news friends. And it feels good to know that since I'm going to do this in college, that all my hard work isn't going to waste and that I actually am good at what I do in here. She shoots for us. She anchors for us. She writes for us. Uh, she's the first person I go to when I need uh, somebody to kind of step up to the plate and she's just always willing to do it and I'm just very excited to see what she does uh, with the rest of her time here. And this week a photography student got the spotlight. Mr. Paul nominated Jackson Gresh because Jackson has a huge interest in not just taking pictures but exploring how a camera really works. I don't know there's just something about photography that's always intrigued me. The ability to instantly get a photograph and like the whole art to it and the cameras and the engineering and the science behind it, it, it all just blends together. It's a perfect mix of art and science. And it's this endeavor that he's, he's, he's going after. So it's things like that, very engineering minded, uh, technical type endeavors, just constantly trying to figure out how the world works or how it worked and how it's not working anymore. Um, he's infatuated with archaic processes. Um, from like the 1800s and into the, into the 1990s potentially, but that might be the breaking point right there. Digital is almost where he draws the line. We'll have more student spotlights on our show when we kick off this next semester. As our show ends today, we will want to tell you about some Pickney Elementary students who have gotten a chance to spend some time with some furry friends at school. ECSN reporter Liz Balestrini has more. Everyone knows the saying, a dog is a man's best friend. And Charles Pinckney Elementary School is taking that saying to a new level with the help of a man named Robert Weber. The reasons it's important, it takes someone who's in the hospital who's feeling in a, in a sad and vulnerable position, and it takes them out of that place. And they get to realize like, oh wow, happiness again. And they just get to absorb 
the happiness of a dog. Robert comes to Pinckney once a week during the Kaleidoscope After School program, and he brings service dogs with him. It's a partnership the school is calling Literacy Unleashed. So through the Literacy Unleashed program, students are invited to a very unique experience and environment that helps to encourage and promote literacy. Trina Noonan is the site coordinator at Pinckney and says that not only do the kids enjoy the program, but Literacy Unleashed is also helping the Charleston County School District meet its goals. It's our contribution to help meet CCSD's Vision 2027, where all students are reading on grade level uh, by fifth grade, and it's really just an awesome way to promote reading and literacy and make it fun for the kids. Making it fun for the kids is where Robert comes in. He enjoys bringing the dogs to the kids each week, but if it wasn't for a horrifying experience, Robert may never have started working with service animals to begin with. 25 years ago I fell off the roof of my house, I broke my back, I was in a hospital for 15 weeks and I was paralyzed. No one ever thought I'd walk again. They said one day, would you like to see a dog? I said, well, what are you talking about? They brought a dog in for me. It was tears of happiness and sadness all at once. Now, Robert wants kids to feel the same connection with dogs that he did. And Trina says it's working because the kids are always thrilled to see the dogs and read with them. The kids, they just light up and they're always so excited to see our furry friends each week. Uh, more importantly, Bailey and Sullivan, they provide the students with this non judgmental space, uh, a space that fosters a sense of comfort, companionship, and it helps to reduce anxiety. An animal in your life is just a fantastic thing, and it doesn't matter if it's a little animal or a big animal, and uh, it's a big responsibility, but comes with it is just such joy and happiness. All in all, the Literacy Unleashed program is at Pinckney Elementary School to turn a dog from a man's best friend into a kid's best friend. Reporting for ECSN, I'm Liz Balestrini. Thanks, Liz. This is our last episode of ECSN in 2022. We thank you for watching this fall, and we'll see you in 2023. I'm Nick Patel, signing off for ECSN.